So I want to challenge you, if you're having these peaks and valleys year after year, maybe your attitude towards what you really do is not where it should be. Because I promise you, if you really love this, you wouldn't have any valleys. You wouldn't have any lulls. You would continue to move forward. You would continue to progress in your systems and your marketing. What is going on, everyone? And welcome to another episode of Mindset Mastery. I'm your host, AZ Araujo, and I hope you had a great week since the last time we spoke. And again, we have one, one mission that is to recalibrate and recommit to the actions that we have to take this week in order to make it successful. And for those of you that are joining us right now, um, I want you to do something because uh, I'm going to ask this from everyone. I think it's important that we realize what we want to create this week, what we want to create this month. Okay. Um, and simply putting it out there, I think is a, is a way to be able to stay focused on the task at hand, right? Seeing what you want, your results. So think about when you went to real estate school, you know exactly what you wanted. You want to get your license. So the actions and the behaviors that you took got you that end result. That's why you're here. That's why you're with A's and Associates. And I want you to start thinking about more about your production, okay? Start thinking about the production and what you want to create this month. We're still towards the end of the beginning of the month. I want you to start thinking about what you want to create by the end of the month. Is it an escrow? Is it two escrows? Is it four escrows? Like, what is it that you're going to take? Is it a listing, two listings? But I also want you to be very aware of, you know, your current, um, your, your, your current results, you can't say, I'm going to have five escrows if you haven't had five all year. That's what I want you to really look at. What is it that's going to stretch you above your current capacity to have you get what you want this month? This is not about impressing me. This is not about impressing others. But really putting that threshold for yourself and saying, I'm going to achieve this this month. Because once we have the result that we want, now we can reverse engineer this to determine what actions and what behaviors, what attitude we need to actually achieve that. Because it's real easy to fall into this trap of, I want the big, the big goals, the big ambitions, but there is no uh, preparation for that on your end, right? There, there is no uh, uh, behavior that you've done over a series of over the last week, two weeks, a month that will lead to that type of result. So what I want you to think about today is like, okay, if I'm able to stretch my capacity, uh, my th current threshold to get to that next level, what does that look like this month? If you didn't get an escrow last month, then maybe the, it is to get that one this month. If you got five, what it, would it take to get six or to repeat the five? So going into this and just putting down, what is it that you're going to achieve? And for those of you go currently uh, with us right now, who's on the call with us? And all right, Nick, Olivia, Rudy, Isela, and for every one of those that, that are uh, currently joining, like, reply with that. What is it that you're going to get this month? We have about 25 days left. I'm sorry, about 20 days left to the month. So I want you to just be very focused on what does that look like? Can you go another month without an escrow? Can you go another month with only two escrows or only one listing? What is it that you want to create this month? Because we need to be able to see the result in order to reinforce the attitude and behaviors. So start thinking about that and reply with that. What is it? One listing and one escrow. Okay, awesome. You have a direct vision of what you want. So now you understand that if you don't do certain things, okay, and that's the difference here because a lot of people say, well, attitude influences behavior. That's, that's correct. Attitude uh, a good attitude will help you get the things that you want. However, the only way to reinforce that is to be able to see the end result. How many times have, have we all made that declaration that we want to get in tip-top shape and we understand what kind of attitude and what kind of behaviors it requires, but yet we can't maintain that, right? Because it's hard for us to obtain the results. We, we don't have the knowledge. We don't have the knowledge of what that actually looks like. And l I've said this many, many times before. You want to start a business, hold four to five open houses a week. And after 80 hours of open houses, you will get results. So we go into this with a good attitude, right? We all understand that. If we do these things, we will get our next escrow. But what ends up happening? 
That attitude kind of dwindles, which also causes our behaviors to dwindle. Because we haven't reinforced the knowledge or the end result because we haven't got any yet. We've done five, six open houses and we still don't have the results. So it's really hard to keep that attitude and continue on those behaviors because we don't have the end result. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. It's, this is the main reason why most are out of this business altogether. It's being able to reinforce that attitude on a consistent basis, especially when you don't have the results that you desire. And we compare ourselves to others and say, well, they have the results. Look at them. Look, look how good the results are. Look what they're driving. They're on vacation all the time. That's what I want. And that's good if that's what you want. However, we don't see the backstory to all of this, right? For example, like I just got another puppy, really cool dog. And uh, I've been posting photos of it and it's been getting, you know, a lot of feedback of people saying, wow, I want one. I'm going to get one. What's the breeder? What's this? What's that? And I'm showing him playing around with my, with my dogs and, and uh, you know, he, he's really cute, right? And he's running around, uh, taking a lot of pictures. But what they don't see, what I'm not showing is like the four or five times he wakes me up at night. The constant crying, right? Because we're crate training him. The accidents, the frustration that comes from that, where I start blaming my daughters for not helping when they didn't do anything wrong. It's a puppy. It's going to have its accidents, right? Where I'm walking around with my chip on his shoulder because I'm being inconvenienced right now. But everyone wants the end result. I wanted the end result. When I first saw the puppy, the whole family was like, wow, this is awesome. I can't wait to bring him home. Well, that very first night, we're like almost dreading our decision because we forgot we forgot how, you know, how much responsibility it takes to actually raise a puppy. And we forget sometimes as well how hard it is to really start a business from scratch. That's where a lot of you have, have, have fallen into. And some of you have been in the game 5, 10 years, and yet you can't get over that threshold because we forget. And here's the thing. You'll never see that. You'll never see that when you see the result because every one of us got into this business because we saw somebody producing at a high level. You were influenced by someone else that showed the results that you want and it's frustrating that we don't have it right now. It's frustrating that you don't have it right now. You've been doing all the things that we've been telling you to do or somewhat and yet we have this attitude like, man, it's never going to happen. I'm having a hard time going. I want to be on vacation. I want to close five, 10 deals a month. But we forget the sleepless nights they had. We forget the frustrations at home that they had. You're only seeing the end result. You're only seeing the cute puppy. And there's certain actions and behaviors that are required for you to even get at that level. And to even be in this game, you got to be able to close transactions consistently. But if your attitude doesn't change about the behaviors that are required, it's always going to be an up and down. It's always going to be the peaks and valleys. And I came up th with this revelation last week that I thought was just mind-blowing to me at least. That every time we have our peaks and valleys is because you really don't like what you're doing. Because when you like what you're doing... The peaks will continue to be peaks. But because you're doing forcefully, because you really don't like the hustle, you really don't like the grind and the work required, you only do enough to get the results that you want, and then you're like, forget the rest. I'm going to take it easy. Because there's no real passion, right? Because you're just going through the motions of just trying to get that result without really loving what you do. There's no other reason to explain the peaks and valleys. You only work so hard to get what you want, and then you stop doing the stuff that got you there. Well, it's maybe because you hate it. But now that we realize why we have the peaks and valleys, maybe we could start realizing that this is what creates the lifestyle that we want. And maybe our attitude needs to change and appreciate. Appreciate yourself of even being in this game, this volatile game. So I want to challenge you, if you're having these peaks and valleys year after year, maybe your attitude towards what you really do is not where it should be. 
Because I promise you, if you really love this, you wouldn't have any valleys. You wouldn't have any lulls. You would continue to move forward. You would continue to progress in your systems and your marketing. Because you love it. But now that we're aware, right? Knowledge is a big component to this. Knowledge is a big component to attitude and behavior. Instead of saying, ah, well, I don't know, AZ. I don't know why I only closed one deal when the month before I closed five. I, I, I don't know. Maybe a part of you just hates it. And now we just have to change our attitude towards it. We have to change our attitude towards marketing and being out there on a consistent basis because that's what's required. But if you hate even going on Facebook Live, if you hate posting on, on social media, on Instagram, and sending emails and making phone calls, your career will be riddled with peaks and valleys. So as opposed to saying, I hate the way this is, I hate going to the gym, right? That's another example. I hate the process because I don't know what to do when I go to the gym. So I'll, I'll avoid it. But I'll uh, secretly loathe myself because I don't like the way I look or the way I feel. So I'll avoid learning. I'll avoid the Facebook marketing. And I'll just work as hard to get what I want and then go back to the valley. Go back to not knowing why my business is up and down. So yes, attitude is everything. Because it influences behavior. And it's reinforced through results. But here's the thing. The results in this game don't come overnight. But that's knowledge. You know that now. Knowing that it doesn't come overnight should keep you, you keep your attitude and your behaviors in line to get the result you want. But we forget about that whole part of knowledge. And we just try to focus on the actions and behaviors, but yet they're inconsistent because it's not being pulled by the end result that you want. The result is not big enough. It doesn't call to you enough. This game is hard. Even for top producers, sometimes it's difficult. So start thinking about what is it that you want this month? I'm not talking about the next 90 days. I'm not talking about the year. What does this month look like? You still have 20 days left. Your attitude towards showing homes has to improve. Your attitude towards open houses has to shift. Your attitude towards marketing and on live videos has to completely change in order for you to get what you want. Because without your attitude, your behaviors will remain the same. And back that up with knowledge. You know that this will get you what you want. The results are all there for you. And we talked about it at the sales meeting. The vast majority of agents are going to be losing market share to the top producers because of this sen false sense of accomplishment. Only working towards getting the results, only working towards going on that vacation because secretly they don't like what they do because of their attitude. I love what I do. And it's hard work. It sucks sometimes, yeah. But I, I know that I can't abandon my business. I know that I have to show up. I know that I, sometimes I have to do the things that I really don't want to do. I know it sucks making those phone calls, sitting in that open house for four hours, right? Maybe looking foolish on Facebook Live. It sucks. But I'm, I promise you, you're going to love the results. And every time you do it, you reinforce your attitude. Every time you just simply show up to the gym, it reinforces behavior. And it sucks. It does. But as you start seeing the results, it's like, oh, that's knowledge. If I do this, if I have this type of attitude and do this type of behavior, wow, I get this result. That whole combination of things right there is, is considered knowledge. 
Your attitude influences behavior, which gets you ultimately what you want. Knowledge. So yeah, like, we all see what everybody else has out there. But we don't see what's not being shown. We don't see, like I, in my situation, the nonstop crying of my puppy. Waking up three to four times a night. The accidents, the frustrations, the blame. My poor daughters. Ah, I have to apologize. It's not their fault. It's a puppy. But I know ultimately I will have a well-behaved best friend of a pet, right? Just like Boy, my first dog. I just forgot how much work it actually took to get there. So for those of you that are just joining us, I, I want you to go ahead and declare what you're going to do this month. And again, again, it's not about impressing me or others. It's about going after exactly that. And I see some of you, you brand new agents, man. I, I love it. I'm, I'm watching you guys. And I'm seeing. And all this hard work is going to pay off. And the only thing that I really think about here, and I'm talking, and you know who I'm talking about. The only thing that I think about is like, I hope they keep this up. Because I've seen this many, many times before. I've been in the game 15 years. And I'm seeing a lot of great action. People just going out there and getting outside their comfort zone. Pushing their threshold of what they consider their normal. And really like stretching the boundaries. And it's awesome to see. Because what you guys are doing in here in the last, you know, 90 days is much greater than it took me the first year I started doing social media marketing. And it's awesome to see. And the only thing I think about is I hope they continue moving forward. And that has to do with your attitude. Understand that ultimately you will get what you want. Just continue on this path. You're, 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 you're forcing the resistance. You're, you're meeting the resistance head on. The resistance wants you to stay back, to stay the way you are. And every time you push through that resistance, it's painful, right? But it's not made to debilitate you. You're doing the open houses. You're going live. You're posting like crazy. You're being known out there so quickly. Don't stop. That is my only thought there. Because I've seen it time and time again. Those that come in hard and they're doing the right things. But because they don't get the end result fast enough, they quit. And they revert. They retract. They lose confidence. So don't do all what you're doing just to quit. We've all seen the successful people, right? They double down when it gets more painful, when it does get painful. When the results are not there. When the finances and, and the bills start piling up. Don't get distracted by that. I remember as we were trying to regenerate our business after... Um, not having a lot of money, right? Losing it. We all know that story. It doesn't matter. Um, but I remember I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul. And as opposed to being like distracted by the bills that are piling up and quitting and being pressured by someone, you know, by the bills to go back to a job or to do things that I don't want to do, I just figured that they're going to get taken care of at some point. But I'm not going to let that dictate my, be my, my actions and my behavior for what I want to do in this industry. And I understand the pressures. And guess what? If you have to send out a late payment, so be it. If you have to incur additional debt to start your business and go after your dream, so be it. 
I can't tell you how many times I've seen those with promise that could change the entire dynamic of their financial situation for their ki- for the wife and their kids or, or for their family quit because of the pressures of bills. Listen, I took my, that pressure to the brink. I couldn't, I couldn't pay my mortgage. I couldn't. But that did not force me to give up on my dream. Because I also knew they weren't going to kick me out overnight. I needed to figure this out. Starting a business is tough. You know what I ended up doing? I ended up maxing out my credit cards. I had to. I had a dream I have to go after. But I also had a lot of confidence in what I could accomplish. I had that conviction and the desire and that fire within. There was no plan B. And some of you can't take off right now because you know there's a plan B in place. My spouse will take care of me. I can always go back to my job. I will just keep this part-time because you don't want to feel the pain. You want something big for your life? You got to be able to thrive in that pain. But I did not let it hinder my progression. I said, if I get kicked out of my house, I will deal with it then. If I can't pay my credit card by the end of the month, I will deal with it then. And if I'm two months late, I will deal with it then. Because I also knew that to build something great takes time. Not just 30 days. Not just a 12-week target. A 12-week target is part of a bigger game altogether. It doesn't mean you're going to get everything that you want out of life in just 12 weeks. AZ, I want a great marriage. So I'm going to really be focused here over the next 12 weeks. That's awesome. But how have you been showing up in the last 10 years? 12 weeks ain't going to change it. It ain't going to change it for your business. But as long as you have the big picture ahead of you, it will push you through the 12 weeks into the, other tw- into the next 12 weeks, into the next 12 weeks where you start seeing bigger results for yourself. But I want you to start thinking that. You say you want it. Ratitude is there. But what do your behaviors say? You can't can dwindle from your, your resolve. You either want it or you don't. I was all in it. And you know what? Yeah, the, the, if it would have never worked out, holy, I would have been in a world of hurt. And that's probably what you're thinking. Most of us think that way. If it doesn't work out, I'm going to be in a bad situation. So we're led by those fears. As opposed to thinking, what if it does? What if it does work out? I wonder where I'll be. None of this would have been possible if I didn't believe in myself. None of it. I had no plan B. If you have a plan B, I need you to destroy it, light it on fire. Because this is it. What are you going to do over the next 20 days? What are you guys hearing in this? Let me see the, uh, I, can't, I can't see any of the comments right here. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Who's on the call? Scroll, um, take out the zoom. All right, guys, what are you guys hearing in this? Patrick, two escrows. Okay, one listing, Isabel. And I'm seeing your actions. And you're one of those individuals that I'm like, I hope you continue to move forward. You have a lot of promise. Wendy, Rudy. Lots of promise. Isela. But I've seen many like you. And it pains me. 
when they disappear into the oblivion. Jasmine, same for you. Ardra, same for you. It's going to take time. And I'm, I'm not trying to, to damage your credit score. I'm not trying to damage your debt situation because I don't know it. All I'm telling you is what I did. I had to go all in on myself. I had to. There was no other choice. I couldn't do anything else. And yes, there was a lot of pain involved, a lot of frustration, a lot of doubt, but I kept going. You know exactly what you have to do to get your next deal. Just get your next deal. And then after that, we'll focus on getting the next one after that. And then the next. Stop focusing on the 10. Just get the next one. So good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Jasmine. We got Ardra. Good morning. My goal this month is to close on the listing I have and, com and commitment from the buyers, from the buyer I've been helping. Good. Get them into a contract. Armando, one escrow, one listing. Good. From a listing. Olivia, one listing. Good. I will get a listing. Awesome. You're declaring it. Now let your behaviors back up that attitude, okay? And some of you, the, those of you that, that haven't, that are facing maybe a fi uh, financial stress, um, let it get a little uglier. It has, to, it has to sometimes. Patrick, you're on this call. You know what that felt like. You know what that feels like. The pressure's there. And when the pressure's there, sometimes we buckle and we start to question ourselves. Am I ever going to get myself out? But there's only one thing we can do is taking the action, right? And lo and behold, 60 days later, financial situation has completely changed. Is it where it needs to be? No, absolutely not. But that's progression. We're all there. We all need it. So this is what I want you to just think about today. Beatrice, good. Two escrows. Easy. Easy. So this is what I want you to think about. Where are you seeing the peaks and valleys, right? Especially in business. Your peaks and valleys. And when you get those valleys, what is it about the process that you actually hate? And then focus on changing your attitude around that concept because you, want, you love the results. So I need you to correlate, correlate that the stuff that you hate actually gets you the results that you want. And you'll start appreciating this part of you. The uncomfortable marketing videos, the uncomfortable phone calls, the boring open houses. You'll start appreciating that more because you know that that gets you this. Because we all love handing over the keys. We all love our clients. That's the easy part. I want you to love the stuff that you hate doing. So start reflecting. If you're starting to see the peaks and valleys, what is it? What is your attitude towards buyers? What is your attitude towards listings that don't sell right away? What is your attitude towards other agents? Start loving that process. And you'll start avoiding the peaks and valleys. You'll start avoiding the, vi the valleys. We want the peaks. We want to continue to grow on that, right? I love it. Mindset mastery. I love, love being here. Gabe, it's ugly right now, but I will not fold and will rise to the occasion. Mind, body, and soul. Patrick reminds me of that cap, uh, the captain. Get off the ship and burn them down. No turning back. We thrive or not. You're in this game. Top producing or just getting in. We all need to reinforce that mindset and change our attitudes, right? Another thing I want you to focus on today, like try smiling anytime you get on the phone. Try smiling every time you put a post on Facebook. That induces like these endorphins of, of positivity. So when you're talking to somebody, just smile while you're talking to somebody. It changes the, like the energy there. That's something that I learned from Dale Carnegie, right? How to influence, uh, 
the book on influence I read a long time ago. And that's something that stuck with me. It's like attitude is, is everything, but it's, it's also behavior. It's like if you learn to smile while you speak, it just sends a different type of energy. But it's all on you. We got Frank Martin, terrible first quarter, battling back. Nine escrows, two listings coming. When he takes ease, give him no rest. I love that, right? General Sansu. When he takes his ease, give him no rest. See, Frank, you're, you're a top producer, and it's always been ingrained in you. And you know exactly what to do. And that right there, you're going to be taking that market share because you are a top producer. And right now is the prime time. And even if you're not top producing right now, you got to have the attitude of a top producer. When he takes his ease, give him no rest. That means you have confidence in yourself. That means you know how to strike and strike hard. This is the time. Guys, I want to thank you again for joining me for another Mindset Mastery. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gives you at least a pathway to getting you what you want this month. So just imagine this. You do get the two escrows. Just imagine you do get that, uh, that listing. That's going to reinforce that attitude that you know you have to come into with every single day. Attitude. Guys, thank you again for joining me. And I will talk to you soon. Have a great day. <laughs>